Hey, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Brian Wenzel. Seems like the first episode went pretty well. I hope you all enjoyed your Labor Day. Uh, I know I did. My family and I, we were able to get away for a little bit. My dad joined us. We went and did some hiking up in the mountains near where we live. Did some camping, so that was really enjoyable. My kids really liked it. Never mind that noise, it's just my dog. <laughs> so we're coming into the end of September here, end of summer, moving into autumn or fall, which for me personally is my favorite season. I have always enjoyed it. I like when it starts to cool down a little bit, but not too cold. Get those nice brisk mornings and evenings, but still warm enough during the day. You can sometimes get away with wearing shorts. I also personally enjoy October. It's a fantastic month, especially where I live in New Mexico. It's very mild, really nice. Plus, with October, you get Halloween, which is definitely my favorite holiday. If you enjoy Halloween, let me know. If it's a holiday that you really enjoy, let me know. Or let me know why you don't like it, if you don't like it. But for me, I I love Halloween. I really enjoy it. So with that, I want to do some more episodes that are going to the more paranormal, spooky side of things. So that's what we're going to get into the topic today's episode is the black-eyed children. Now, this is some mythology that has gone back hundreds of years with some anecdotal reports, but it's definitely become more popular in the last 25 years or so, especially with internet forums. It's definitely really had a big uprising with that, and, and people uh, they're having their own eyewitness reports and whatnot about it. So I want to talk a little bit about them, kind of my thoughts on it. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. So here we go, the black-eyed children. So what are they? What, what exactly is a black-eyed child or the black-eyed children? So most people describe them as being a ghoulish creature. Um, that's obviously a child that attempt to gain entry into either your home or your vehicle. Now, most reports have them typically appearing at night, but there have been some in the daytime. Now, what they will do is they will typically knock on your doors or windows and will beg to be let in. But let me put this out there, a little warning. Do not let them in. Do not allow them entry. Their mythology really began popping up around the mid-late 90s, again, with internet forums becoming really popular. But again, there are a lot of anecdotal reports that go back hundreds of years of children like this. Now, their appearance, um, what people report, the description of their appearance, have all been pretty similar. So most commonly, they're cited as having pale skin color with light colored hair. That's kind of the most common description. Also, they usually wear modern casual clothing, but there have been some witnesses that claim them to be to wearing old-fashioned style clothing. There are even some reports that have indicated them wearing sunglasses or even having their hair grown out in bangs to hide their eyes. So they typically travel in pairs, allowing them to more easily intimidate their victims uh, rather than being if they were solo. Some reports have them traveling in groups of three or even four, but typically in pairs is the most common sighting. Now, their ages have been reported to be anywhere from as young as about six years old to upwards of about 16 years old. So pretty good range there of about 10 years or so. Now, most typical accounts have one of the pair as an as an older child and then one as a younger child. Now, here's what gives them their namesake, black eyed children. Their eyes are almost always solid black with no distinction of any sort of white iris or pupil separation. Some have even claimed that their eyes just to be basically a gaping black hole as if there's no eyes there at all. So again, that gives them their namesake, black eyed children. Upon initial sight, everyone that sees them usually has the same feeling, just terror. Now their intentions Once inside your home or vehicle, it's been up for debate. There hasn't been a lot of eyewitness testimony to exactly what their intentions are, as most people tend to not allow them into their home, obviously. Are they sinister? Is there something that they're wanting that's considered evil or bad? Or are they innocent? 
I'm not sure. Let me know what your thoughts are. I, I tend to lean towards the, you know, bit more sinister evil side. And as we get into this, you'll see why. But yeah, let me know what your thoughts are. So when they're doing their thing, when they're coming up to you in a pair, in general, mo most witnesses claim that one child, typically the older one, will approach the strangers first and assist up insist upon entering. While the other younger child will remain behind, typically being quiet and, and almost uh, appearing shy, like in nature. So some people have actually claimed that because of this, they have feelings and urges to help that younger child, almost as if though they feel maybe the child's in danger or something along those lines. During their encounters, the children will use polite gestures such as, please, sir or ma'am, they'll be really nice as far as how they talk to the people. But if they're rejected, they will typically leave without any issue. Now, it's also thought that they have special abilities. But again, their full powers or abilities are not really known just because most requests for them to enter their homes or vehicles are turned down. And like I said just a moment ago, they typically will leave without issue if they're rejected. So again, their powers and abilities aren't fully known. So what sort of evils or atrocities do you suspect might be incurred should you allow them in, whether they're evil or not? You know, are they actually good looking for maybe someone pure enough to allow them entry? Uh, are they testing us maybe? I, I don't know. I, you know, again, the accounts are, are really vague as to what they want because most people are, are so terrified that they, they don't want to allow them entry. And it seems like they need to be allowed entry to actually come in and do whatever it is they do. There are some reports of strange happenings when these children are present. Uh, they are typically cited as possibly having psychic or even telepathic powers. A lot of reports state that these children will stare at each other before calling out the adults, almost as if though they're communicating, again, like I said, telepathically. Some individuals have even reported the children following them after they move. So somebody might be in one townhouse, have an encounter, you know, tell the kids, no, you can't come in, then they move to another town, and then they see the same children have a very similar encounter. That seems to be a common occurrence with some. So a lot of witnesses actually say that they can manipulate their emotions, uh, inciting panic, fear, and other bad emotions to the point of where people will be trembling and even sweating. Others have even claimed their pets will hide from the children when they see them. You know, you'll have a dog or a cat that are typically friendly to a human, and they see these children and, and don't want to be near them and run off. So that's, you know, typically a sign that they're probably up to no good. If I saw my dog do that with the child outside, my, my, dog, my dogs are really friendly. So that definitely would be an indication to me. So there have even been claims of hip, hypnotic-like powers as well, almost forcing the victims to let the children inside as if though they're using those telepathic powers to influence their victim to allow them in. Another common trait when the children are in the area is flickering lights and even power outages. So if you see that sort of thing in your house or if you have a power outage and then you have these children show up, probably, you know, don't let them in. There's even one woman that uh, has actually claimed to, she let the children enter her home and then now suffers from regular nosebleeds and has since been diagnosed with skin cancer, which is consistent with high levels of radiation exposure. So that gives you one indication. Now, this is just one person's claim that had an experience. She let them into her home and then started having these nosebleeds and then was diagnosed with this skin cancer, again, that was related to radiation. Take it with a grain of salt. Obviously, we don't know if that was a direct cause from those children or if it's something else, other lifestyles, who knows. But this is just one claim that I've, I found. So most witnesses will also report the children speaking to be very limited, uh, typically asking really short questions such as, we need to make a phone call, our parents are coming, you know, just more ways to dupe you to letting them in to your home. 
Some have even claimed their usage of old-fashioned words such as telegraph instead of telephone. Again, kind of goes along with the clothing too, the old-fashioned clothing claims. Others have described them as being intelligent in their questions. So, you know, it's you've got some claiming that they're kind of limited, some claiming that they're intelligent. You know, let me know what you think. So it seems the request can be quite different depending on the witness. So me personally, I wonder if this has to do with their telepathic abilities. If that is the case, are they perhaps reading your mind and using that against you to create a question that is more tailored to the individual? Perhaps. I, you know, I, I don't know. Again, let me know. Seems pretty spooky, right? Some reports of the children have been even in broad daylight, like I said before at the beginning, but most are at night. It seems that they pre prefer to be late at night. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also, their activity tends to increase near Halloween as well. Don't they all, right? Yeah, go figure. <laughs> Still, pretty fun when it's as we're getting close to Halloween to think about this stuff. Give yourself a little fright. The black-eyed children appearance really boomed in the late 90s with internet paranormal and horror forums becoming much more popular. Uh, they still are to this day. There's there's a lot of horror and paranormal forums online that you can search and you can get on there and you can find information about, about this and a lot of other things. So it's definitely become really popular since then. Again, like I said at the beginning, there have been anecdotal reports going back as, as many as hundreds of years of very similar kinds of incidents which would make sense with a lot of the reports of kind of the old timey speech using older words that aren't used typically nowadays. And then even their people saying their clothing looks a lot more older fashioned type of clothing. So most stories online on these forums are typically published anonymously, um, not really linked to any actual news or police reports. So again, it kind of lends to are these real? Is it just people making up stories and putting it online just to to grow these tales and, and kind of create a modern tall tale? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I tend to, I'm somewhat skeptical, but I've always been kind of spiritual in a sense. So I kind of want to believe that it's true, but at the same time, I've never personally experienced anything like this. So I don't know. I tend to lean being towards a little bit more skeptical skeptical on this one. If you're skeptical, let me know. If you believe, let me know. I, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. So despite lack of tangible evidence, many people claim to believe in the black-eyed children, though. Now, this is just a lot of, from the witnesses, that a lot of these reports that I found and, and things that I was able to research, I was able to find, most people tend to believe in them. Again, I'm kind of on the fence right now about it. I'm not sure. It's definitely seems like with the horror fiction online, it's a bit sensationalized perhaps, you know, and with pop culture and various other fictional tales. Again, like I said, I enjoy Halloween. I enjoy that holiday. I like watching horror films and, and things like that and reading tales. So maybe it's that side of us that wants to be scared why we want to believe in these sort of things and we keep perpetuating it again i don't know i'm you know like i said i'm still on the fence about it but i like the idea of this it's it's really spooky really scary if if you like it yeah let me know anyways i'm rambling on but if you have any tales or encounters such as this please let me know i would love to hear them this is a topic that both fascinates and terrifies me for sure me personally, I've not had any encounter with the black-eyed children or a black-eyed child. I certainly hope I don't ever. If I do, perhaps I'll regale you with my tales. You know, having two children of my own, it sometimes feels as if though they're scheming against me and, and you know, staring me down and uh, I'm just joking. It's, you know, I love my kids. They're great, but yeah, this is definitely one that's a little spooky. Um, just wanted to do a little short one about that. If you have any questions or comments about this, hit me up. Let me know. You can find me on Facebook, Our Weird World Podcast. You can also send me an email to OurWeirdWorldPodcast at gmail.com. 
Again, I'm Brian. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have tales like this, if you've had experiences like this, get on the Facebook. Let me know. I'd love to hear it. Send me an email. You know, maybe I'll share your story if, if you'd you know, want, want me to. If you want to share it with me, share it with the world. I, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.